I am Julie Byrne. I'm a professor of religion at Hofstra University in Hempstead, New York. I teach American religion, Catholic studies, various topics in race and religion, gender and religion. And um, I'm the author of a book called Oh God of Players, the story of the Immaculata Mighty Max. And I'm here at Cabrini talking about the book. And, um, and that's my scene here tonight. All right, awesome. What other ways were the women asserting themselves besides just basketball, if any? Well, they were, I think, through basketball, doing things with their bodies differently. The mere fact of running, sweating, pushing other girls was just a really different physical thing for Catholic girls to do in an atmosphere when they were supposed to be nice, sweet, gentle, like the Virgin Mary. The Virgin Mary was their model, sweet, mild, and meek. And to do this physically aggressive game that was very specifically unladylike was just different. And then, you know, maybe the most dramatic thing they did was they protested the very constraining uniforms that they had to wear. Mm -hmm. So they did go on a um, sort of detail to the college president and begged her to lose these black leggings that they had to wear, which were so hot and impractical and also didn't look good for the guys who were coming to see the games. So they really tried to change that. Right. Uh, did they argue about Watergate and Woodward and Bernstein? You know, I should have asked them that. But... Because I was less attuned to those changes of the 60s, I did fail to sort of get at the nitty-gritty of, so were they talking about Vatican II? Were they talking about Nixon? Were they talking about the hippies? Were they talking about Woodstock? I didn't ask them. Okay. Um, was the ec ecology movement on campus? At the no. Time? no. Really not much ecological awareness at that time. I don't think there was any recycling program in, inaugurated in tandem with the basketball success. Right. And I think you covered this a little bit during your uh, presentation, but to what degree was the sexual revolution taking place on campus? Yeah, you know, I do think that tangentially I got the sense that it was more acceptable for girls to have boyfriends with whom they went out on dates more acceptable to um, go a little further with the boys than it would have been a decade earlier, and more openness about alternative sexuality so that, you know, the women on the 70s teams were much more free about saying there were all types of sexuality on the team versus the girls in the 30s who sort of only ever explained any girl-on-girl -girl stuff as a phase or normal experimenting and, you know, not really that, you know, anything might or could ever seriously come of it. Right. Okay, great. And our last question is, what did the parents think about what the players were doing, the parents of the players? The parents loved it. And this was one of the surprising things that I found, that Catholic women's basketball was so supported by the rest of the culture, even though playing sports for women was such an unusual thing in American culture at the time. Boys playing football, no problem. But very few girls were playing competitive sports in the United States before the 1970s, except in Philadelphia, maybe in a little bit in Iowa, a little bit in Texas. Those were really the hot spots for competitive women's sports, and Philly was just way ahead of it. But for those who were within the culture, loved it. And the girls talked about their dads coming to games, their moms coming to games, the cheering. They, they had a great time. All right, great. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks so much, All too. Right. Thank great. you very much. Appreciate Author Julie it. Byrne, go buy her book. Totally scared of this. <laughs>